We went through the formation of a covalent bond by using hydrogen as an example, and that was the Lewis structure eventually uh, we came up with in the last lecture. If we use the similar principle and talk about the process of the covalent bond formation between a hydrogen atom and a fluorine atom, between two fluorine atoms, okay, we will come up with a loose structure of hydrogen fluoride and the fluorine molecules like that. Here, they share one pair of electrons. Here, they share one pair of electrons. So that the octet rule is satisfied for each of the atoms in the molecule. Again, for hydrogen, the octet rule means two, not eight. Well, now we look at the loose structures of all these different molecules here. What we notice that in the Lewis structures, there are actually electrons that are shared. There are also electrons that are not shared between the atoms. All right. The electrons that are shared between atoms are called bonding electrons. We use a dash to represent one pair of shared electrons. The electrons that stay locally within one atom that are not involved in the electron sharing are called non-bonding electrons. Non-bonding electrons are also referred to as unshared electron pairs, long pairs of electrons, long electron pairs, or long pairs. Here is again showing us some of the electron pairs are shared, some of them are long pairs. In the case of hydrogen molecule, and in the examples we discussed on the loose structures of a few molecules on the previous slides, all the examples we saw so far, they always have one pair of electrons shared between two atoms. This kind of chemical bond is called a single bond. However, there are occasions where two pairs of electrons, or maybe even three pairs of electrons, are needed to be shared so that each atom will satisfy the octet rule. In those cases, the bonds are called double bonds or triple bonds. Here are two examples for double bonds and a triple bond. I should have included the lone pair on oxygen for carbon dioxide. I should have included the lone pair on nitrogen in case of nitrogen molecule N2. Now, by the way, when you write the Lewis structures of molecular compounds, lone pairs are not required to be shown. So it is absolutely correct if you do not draw the lone pair in the Lewis structure. However, for us as beginners for this class, let's make it into a habit that we always include long pairs so that we can keep a track of the number of electrons. That will help you a lot. All right, so let's look at the carbon dioxide again. In this case, there are actually two double bonds around carbon atoms and there is a triple bond in the case of a nitrogen. All right, the maximum number of, el of electron pairs can be shared between two atoms is three, which means there is no such a bond that's called quadruple bond. So we have only single, double, triple bond. 
Both double bounds and triple bounds are called multiple bounds. There is a strong tendency for atoms of nonmetal elements to form a specific number of covalent bonds. Do you remember when we were talking about any compounds? We learned that given an element many times, not all the times, many times given an element, we can figure out the amount of charge that element is going to carry when it becomes an ion. How do we do that? Octet rule. An atom will keep losing or gaining electrons until it gets eight electrons in its outermost shell. As a result, we know how many that atom is going to lose or gain. Here, for covalent bonds, again, the goal for atoms to share electrons is to get eight electrons in their outermost shell. So they will keep sharing until the octet rule is satisfied. Because of that, each atom tends to share a specific number of pairs of electrons in order to get eight. The number of bonds formed is equal to the number of electrons the nonmetal atom must share to uh, we just went over this. So you know how many it is gonna share because you know how many it needs to get eight. All right, we will go, we will proceed with this topic again in the next episode. We're going to look at specific examples to see how many bonds a nanometer atom is going to form with different, in different situations.